they will get started to call them. you need to make a call make it immediately okay Okay, we'll get started. Just make it quick. How many problems are there? 11, huh? Okay, two, pro two minutes for each problem, 22 minutes. Okay, three minutes buffer, 25 minutes. Make it fast.
So remember, we did a similar problem yesterday. So one to nine, how many numbers are there? Nine digits are there. Out of the nine digits, so they are expecting you to form three-digit numbers. So it is going to be nine p three. Out of the nine p three numbers, Those are online. Are you able to do? Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Good. Continue. If any doubt, let me know. Those are online. I would like to have your videos being switched on. I repeat, those are online. I want your videos to be switched on. So what is the answer for the second one? How many four digit numbers are there with no digits repeated? How many four digit numbers are there with no, that's what the question is, right? So what did they ask? Hmm. So when you, So what is the answer for the second one? See, when they say how many four-digit numbers can be formed, what are all the digits that you can make use of? To form numbers, what are all the digits that we need? Zero to nine. You need all the 10 digits, right? But when you want a four-digit number, if you're going to use the digits from one to nine, if you're going to use the digits from one to nine, then how many four-digit numbers can you form without repetition? It is 90. 94. But in this, what will happen is the challenge is you, you cannot use zero at all. When you use one to nine, you'll be missing on the numbers like thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. That's what they told you. They didn't mention anything about repetition. No? How many four digit numbers can be formed? You can repeat them also. No? Oh, no digit repeated. Okay. But still, see, we'll be missing one to one zero two four. 1025, 1026, because you're not taking zero when you count from 1 to 9. 
if you take only the, num the numbers digits from 1 to 9 right yeah you you are missing the numbers where zero will come in the position anything other than the thousand space no so think in those terms <coughs> See, don't worry, do the next one. Let's stick to the timer. If you're not able to get it, not an issue. See, for the second problem, how many of you, those who are online, could solve that? Sir, is it 5040? Sorry, is it 9? 5040. I don't know the question. number. Can you tell me the, can you tell me what is the way you solved it? How did you arrive at that number? You have to like, take numbers from 0 to 9, uh, that will be 10. So with like the uh, formula NPR, we can uh, take N is equal to 10. And as you have to find like a four digit number, R will be four. So using the NPR formula, when you like do 10 factorial by um, six factorial. So you basically wrote 10P4, right? Uh, you, you basically wrote 10P4, you got the answer as 5040. Yes, sir. There is a mistake, I'll tell you. Okay, I'll tell you what is the mistake you did. So listen to this. See, this is the one that, which was troubling you, no? See, how many four-digit numbers are there with no digit repeated, right? So for the four-digit numbers to be formed, you're going to use an digits between 0 to 9. So how many digits do you have? 10, right? So since you need a four-digit number, if at all you write the answer as 10P4, right? One of the answers that we got is 5040 because 10 digits out of the 10 digits, you use the four digits and then write it. You get the answer as 5040. If you say that this is the final answer, you're wrong for what reason? Because in this 10 digits, right, zero is also there. When the zero is used in the thousand position, it will not be a four digit number, rather, it will be only a three digit number. So, to make it a four digit number, how many blank spaces do we have? One, two, three, four. In those four blank spaces, what are all the digits the thousand space can take? It can take anywhere between one to nine. So, how many ways can you fill this first? You can fill it in nine ways. You can fill it in nine ways. Right. Either of the nine numbers, you put it here. So remaining, how many digits do you have in your hand? You have nine digits. So between zero to nine, you have 10 digits. Out of those 10 digits, I should not use zero in the thousands position. So I have used anywhere between one to nine. That is why I have filled it in nine ways. It is not nine factorial. It is nine ways. In after nine, you have three blank spaces. In those three blank spaces, what are we supposed to do? You fill it with, you can fill, you can use any of the remaining nine numbers because the repetition is not allowed. Suppose you have used one here. 
how many digits you have how many digits are left out you are left out with nine digits out of those nine digits you can fill it in 9p3 ways meaning this and this should happen simultaneously so using the multiplication principle what can you say it is going to be 9 into 9p3 9p3 would have got the answer in the previous problem what is the answer for that it is 504 so 9 into 504 should be the answer so basically it is 5040 minus 9 5040 minus 9. Sorry, 5040 minus 504. <clears throat> See, 5040 minus 504. So it should be 6, 3. How much is it? 49 minus 5 is 44. Four. Oh, it is 5436. 4, 5, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It is 4536. So, answer will be 4536. This should be the answer. It is not 5040. Right? So, I hope you could understand. Those who told me that the answer is 5040. Did you understand the mistake? Yes, sir. Yes. The third question is, how many three-digit even numbers can be made using the digits 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, if no digit is repeated? So, 1, 2, 3, right? So, what are the three ways in, what are the ways in which you can fill the unit space? You can put 2, 4 or 6. So, you can fill it in, you can fill this in three ways, not three factorial. It is three ways, only three ways. So, in these two places, right, how will you fill it? So, out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, out of the 6 numbers available, you have used 1 here. So, how many are left out? 5. 5 are left out. Out of the 5, you can use you 2. Because 1, you have already used it here. It is 5p2, not 6p2. So, 1, 2, 3, I don't think 5 is there in the question. Is 5 there? No, then only six digits. No, one, two, three, four, six, seven. So out of the six digits, you have used one here. So remaining five digits, out of those five digits, you need to fill two blank spaces. So it is 5P2. So 5P2 is going to be 5 factorial by 3 factorial into 3 ways. So 5 factorial is going to be 120 divided by 6 into 3. This will cancel this two. Answer will be 60. So you can form 60 even numbers using these digits. Is that clear? <coughs> so I hope you are checking the answer also at the back. Are you? Can I proceed? Fourth question is, find the number of four digit numbers that can be formed using the digits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If no digit is repeated, how many of these will be even? That's all the first part. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 with all the digits. You can, can you form a four digit number? Yes, you can form it in 5, 3, 4 ways. You have five numbers and four blank spaces. Right? It is going to be 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 4 factorial, which is 1 factorial. 5 factorial is 120. Out of these 120 numbers, they are asking us how many even numbers would be possible. So, how many blank spaces do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. In those four blank spaces, for the number to be even, you need to concentrate on units position. 
So unit position can be filled with two or four. So you can do it in two ways. So how many blank spaces do you have? Three blank spaces and how many numbers are left in your hand? Four. So out of the four numbers that are left, you can fill the three blank spaces in four P three ways into this unit space can be filled in two ways. So what is going to be the answer? So 4P3 is 4 factorial by 1 factorial into 2. 4 factorial is going to be 24. So 24 into 2 is going to give us 48. Is that point clear? Yes. I'll do it, check it. Okay. See, find the value of n if n minus 1 p3 is to n p4 is equal to 1 by 9. Right. So n minus 1 factorial divided by it is n minus 4 factorial, the whole divided by n factorial divided by n minus 4 factorial is equal to 1 by 9. So, n, by, n minus 4 factorial will get cancelled. n minus 1 factorial by n factorial is 1 by n. 
So can I directly write it as one by n? Because n minus one factorial here, n factorial can be written as n into n minus one factorial. They both will get cancelled. So one by n is equal to one by nine. So what is the value of n? That's the answer. Okay. So listen. For the seventh one, find r if phi p r is equal to two times six p r minus one. So phi p r is going to be phi factorial by phi minus r factorial is equal to two into six factorial divided by six minus six minus of r plus one, which is seven minus r factorial. So that's one common mistake which people do. They write it as 6 minus r minus 1. They write 5 minus r factorial. But it is 6 minus of r minus 1. Right? 6 minus of r minus 1. I use the word minus of. Means there is a bracket. Right? So it is 6 minus r plus 1. So it is 7 minus r factorial. Is the point here? So 5 factorial, 6 factorial. So 6 factorial can be written as 6 into 5 factorial. Can I directly cancel it? So, 5 factorial will cancel 6 factorial 6 times. Why is it so? 6 factorial is 6 into 5 factorial. 5 factorial and 5 factorial are gone. So, cross multiply 7 minus r factorial is equal to 2 into 6 is 12. 12 into 5 minus r factorial. Out of 7 minus r factorial and 5 minus r factorial, which one is greater? It is 7 minus r. Right? So, you can write it as 7 minus r into 6 minus r into pi minus r factorial is equal to 12 into pi minus r factorial. This and this will get cancelled. So, it is going to be 42 minus, no, 42 minus 13 r plus r square is equal to 12. So, r square minus 13 r minus 30 is 0. So, r square not minus plus 30. So, r, r minus 10 into r minus 3. So, it is going to be r minus 10 into r minus 3 is equal to 0. So, r will be 10 or 3. See, 10, it is not possible because r cannot be greater than 5. So, 10 is not possible. Hence, the answer is supposed to be 3. Is it point here? Can I proceed? Yeah. The copy. Next one. Okay. okay. Listen to this. The second subdivision, it says 5p r is equal to 6p r minus 1. Right? 5p r is equal to 6p r minus 1. So 5p r is going to be 5 factorial by phi minus r factorial is equal to 6 factorial by the same logic, 6 minus of r minus 1. That is going to be 7 minus r factorial. Right? So, it is going to be 5 factorial divided by phi minus r factorial is equal to 6 into phi factorial divided by 7 minus r into 6 minus r into Phi minus r factorial, phi minus r factorial, phi minus r factorial, and phi factorial and phi factorial are gone. Cross multiply. So you will again get 42 minus 13 r plus r square is equal to 6. So r square minus 13 r plus 36 is equal to 0. So 36 means what are the multiples? 9 and 4. 9 and 3. R. 9 and 4 will work. Yeah. So, r minus 9 into r minus 4 is equal to 0. So, r will be 
nine or four. So nine is not possible. So four will be the answer. Why nine is not possible? Because the number of blank spaces cannot be greater than the number of available items. So, but what is the answer given at the back? They have given both. Uh, they didn't give nine or four. No. So that's why I told you, you know that example is wrong. The one which we discussed yesterday. Greater in terms of less. Phi minus r. Let's say r is equal to two. You subtract two from five or seven. Which one is greater? Time work. So which problem are we? Eight. Ah, oh. yeah. Tell me. R minus R minus five is greater. See, if at all you get a doubt of that sort, no, just substitute a number and see. Same same number in both the cases. <clears throat> Shall I proceed? Those are online are able to understand. Yes. So listen, how many words with or without meaning can be formed using the letters of the word equation using each letter exactly once? So in the equation, if you observe, is there any repetition that is there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So out of the eight letters available, you're going to arrange the eight letters among themselves. So answer will be eight factor. How much? Four zero three two zero. So six factorial is seven twenty. Seven twenty into seven, you think you'll get five zero four zero? Clear? So the ninth one is how many words with or without meaning can be made from the letters of the word Monday, assuming that no letter is repeated if four letters are used at a time. So how many letters are there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Out of the six letters available from Monday, you need to form words in such a way that there is no letter that is going to get repeated. And secondly, the first subdivision says only four letters are used at a time. So out of the six available letters, you are using only four. So it is going to be 6P4, which will be 6 factorial by 2 factorial, which is going to be 6 into 5 into 4 into 3 divided by 2 factorial and a 2 factorial cancel this and this. 12, 12 into 5, 60. Yeah, 60 into 6, 3, 6. Is that correct? Yeah. So you're going to have 360. Second is... All the letters are used at a time. So all the letters are used at a time. It is going to be six factorial. So basically why we are writing a six factorial is observe. It is basically six P six. Six letters are there. Six blank spaces are there. Six P six means six factorial by six minus six factorial. How much is that? Zero factorial. But what is zero factorial? One. So you're going to have six factorial. So what is 6 factorial? 5 factorial is 120 into 6 is going to be 720. So it's exactly double this value. Right? And third, all letters are used, but if the first letter is a vowel. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Out of the 6 letters, you need to ensure that the first letter should either be A or O. So this can be filled in two ways. So how many blank spaces do you have? Five blank spaces. How many letters do you have? You have five. So 5P5 five five is going to be five factorial. The remaining five letters can be arranged among themselves in five factorial ways. So five factorial multiplied with the first can be filled in two ways. So five factorial into two, that is going to be 120 into two, which is 240. That is answer. Thank you.
You're, is someone copying? You're done? Listen. Tenth question is. Yeah, tenth question is. In how many of the distinct permutations of the letters Mississippi do the four eyes not come together? So they don't want the four eyes to come together. Okay, listen. First of all, how many letters are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So out of the 11 letters available, so 11 letters observed. So 11 letters arranged among themselves is how much? 11 factorial. It is 11 factorial. Yeah. Divided by uh, what are all repeating? I is repeating 1, 2, 3, 4. So I is repeating 4 times. So 4 factorial. S is repeating 4 times. So 4 factorial. P is repeating 2 times. 11 factorial divided by 4 factorial into 4 factorial into 2 factorial. Let this be equation number 1. So this is, these are the number of letters that can be formed by using all the letters at the same time. Second is, if all I's are together, if all I's are together, then what would have happened? If all I's are together, how many I's can be together? Four I's. So, out of the 11 letters that are available, if you tie all those I's and treat it as one object, so how many letters are left out? Seven blank spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In these seven blank spaces, you will fill all the letters other than I. And in the eighth blank space, you will have all the I's together treated as one object. So, here you can fill all the I's treated together as one object in one way. Right. How many more blank spaces do you have? Seven. So in those seven blank spaces, you can rearrange the other letters as seven factorial. But listen to this carefully. Seven plus one should be treated as eight objects. The eight objects among themselves can be arranged in eight factorial ways divided by in that 8 factorial also, there are letters other than I that are repeating. What are they? They are S and P. So, S is repeating itself 4 times. So, 4 factorial and P is repeating itself 2 times. So, 2 factorial. Did you understand why I put 8 factorial? Don't make a mistake of writing 7 factorial. So, 7 are the different letters other than I. All I's tied together is going to be 1 letter. So, 7 plus 1 is going to be 8 objects. 8 objects need to be arranged in 8 blank spaces. So that is 8 factorial divided by the number of factorial times the letters are repeated. Okay. So what is the meaning of this? So the first one is using all the letters. Second one is it's a specific case. What is it? Where all the I's are together. But what is the question expecting? They don't want I's to be together. Means you need to do 1 minus 2. That will be the answer. So basically it will be 11 factorial divided by 4 factorial into 4 factorial into 2 factorial minus 8 factorial divided by 4 factorial into 2 factorial. Make sense? Right? Did you understand? Answer for this, sir.
So on solving this, how much are we getting? Two seven three zero. Sorry, hmm. Okay, I'll just write that book answer. Correction. So, correction is so what is the answer? 33810. The last problem in this exercise is <coughs> in how many ways can the letters of the word permutation be arranged if the words start with P and end with S? So permutation, how many letters are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So out of the 12 letters, first letter should start with P and the second should and the ending should have S. So how many blank spaces are left? 10. So since these two are going to be fixed positions, the 10 letters can be arranged among themselves in 10 factorial ways. That is the answer for the first one. Okay, that is the answer for the first one. It can, they can be arranged among themselves in 10 factorial ways. Second is, in how many ways can you arrange the letters of the word permutations if all the vowels are supposed to be together? What are all the vowels that you have? You have A, E, I, Oh, you, you have all of them. So out of the 12 available letters, you need to remove five. So you have seven blank spaces which come, which have only consonants and one blank space should have all the vowels tied together as one object. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So it is eight factorial divided by, divided by Y two factorial. So which is repeated, T is repeated two times. So 8 factorial divided by 2 factorial into these 5 letters can be arranged among themselves in 5 factorial. In the previous problem where I's were involved, I didn't do it because all the I's were the same object. Numbers are different. Right? But I, we never spoke about numbers tied together. There is no question of that sort. So let me talk about all the letters tied together. Okay, so 8 factorial by 2 factorial into 5 factorial. I hope you could understand this. That is the answer for the second one. So what about the third one? There are always 4 letters between P and S. There are always 4 letters between P and S. This is what the trickiest part is. Observe. So how many blank spaces do you have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if I start with P here, I need to ensure, listen to this carefully, I need to ensure that by the time the S comes, there should be four letters in between. So if P takes the first position, one, I need to leave these four blank spaces, S should come here. So S will take the fifth position. Or if so, they are clear, no? There are always four letters between P and S, but they didn't say where should P be placed and where should S be placed. Suppose I place S here, P will come here. Are you able to understand what is the meaning? So, P comma S, what are all the positions it can take? It can take 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, 7, 
फोर एट फाइव नाइन सिक्स टेन सेवन इलेवन एट ट्वेल्व सो दिस कैन बी बिटवीन पी एंड एस बट द सेम काइंड ऑफ पैटर्न कैन हैपन बिटवीन एस एंड पी ऑल्सो is the point clear so how many positions is it able to take 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 so 8 into 2 it is going to be 16 16 into how many blank spaces do we have 10 blank spaces the 10 blank spaces can be arranged in 10 factorial ways is the point clear oh yeah yeah sorry so it should be 10 factorial divided by 2 factorial because p is repeating itself twice is the point clear yes I think there is a mistake here. One five one two three four five six seven eight. Um, a mistake is there. That's why I was thinking, guys. A small correction. Let's come from the beginning. See, for the third subdivision, there are always four letters between P and S. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. If P comes here in the first position, one, two, three, four blank spaces left out. S should come in the sixth position. S should come in the sixth position. So if I take P comma S position, it can be one comma six, two seven, three eight, four nine. Five ten, six eleven, seven twelve. So basically, there are only seven possibilities. So P and S can be in any of the seven position, and similarly, S and P can be between any seven position. So seven into two, which is going to be fourteen. So fourteen ways are possible. Fourteen multiplied with how many letters are left out? Ten letters. So the ten letters can be arranged among themselves in ten factorial ways divided by t is repeating two times. So it will be ten factorial divided by two factor. Okay. So this will be the answer. <clears throat> okay. Now. Listen to this carefully. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. The next part is we actually didn't do this part of the question. That is the first part. In how many ways can the letters of the word permutations be arranged? Okay, if I break it as the first part, even before that, if if then what will be the answer? Twelve factorial divided by two factorial. That's it. So you can arrange the letters of the word permutations among themselves in twelve factorial divided by two factorial ways. Is that clear? Yeah. What is happening? Which one? This one, eight factorial by two factorial. You can remember? No, I <clears throat> forgot that five factorial. Huh? So what is eight factorial? Four zero three two zero into sixty. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll introduce combinations. Okay. So problems do it as homework and stuff. <clears throat> Shall we get started? So those who are online are able to hear me. Are you able to understand? 
Yes, sir. Okay. So the last topic of this chapter is about combinations. So when we talk about combinations, right? Combinations basically means selections. Listen, listen. Permutation means arrangements. Combination means selection. Okay. So let's take an example. Let's take a an example like this. Let us assume that there is a group of three lawn tennis players X, Y, Z. A team consisting of two players is to be formed. Right. Whenever you think of cricket or you think of tennis, all these things is about selection, right? So there you don't speak about what are the number of permutations. Rather, you will say what are the number of combinations. Okay. So here, if you observe, a team consisting of two players is to be formed. This is where I would, I would like to stress. If the same keyword formed is used for letters or numbers, it becomes permutation. Because how were the questions in the previous exercise? We saw that how many words can be formed using the letters. So formed in the case of letters or numbers is going to be permutation. Whereas if the same form come in terms of making a team, right? It falls under combination. That is one important point you need to keep in your mind. Okay, form them. In how many ways can you do so? Right? In how many ways can you do? What are they saying? There are three lawn tennis players, X, Y, Z. We, we are not concerned about their name. There is only one team that is required for which you need two players. Right? So what are the different combinations that are possible? You can have X, Y, or Y, Z, or X, Z. So X, Y, Y, Z, or X, Z. Right? <coughs> so, if you build a team of this combination, X, Y, you call it as a combination. Similarly, Y, Z is a combination. And Z, X is also a combination because here the order is not important. X, Y mean the same as Y, X. Whereas in permutations, what is important? Order is important because if the digit one has to come in the thousands position, it has to come only in that position. You cannot say I'll put one there and say it is going to be work as the same number. No. So for permutations, order is important. Whereas for combination, order is not important. So to put it simple, combination is a, what do you say? Combination is one of the steps involved in permutations. I'll tell you how I'm trying to state it. Listen to this carefully. What is combination? Combination is one of the intermediate steps of permutation. Okay. Give me a confirmation. Are you clear to this step? Did you understand what a combination is? X, Y, Y, Z, and Z, X. Right? So, these are X, Y, Y, Z, and Z, X. And each of the selection is called as a combination of three different objects taken two at a time. So, if I have to frame a mathematical equation to it, I had three objects. Out of the three objects, I took two objects at a time and formed a team of this sort. Let's get to Is the point clear? No. Let's see. I told you, you know, in a combination, what is not important? The order is not important. X, Y, and Y, X mean the same. Right? Now, let us consider some more examples. Suppose there are 12 persons who meet in a room and each shake hand with all the others. So, one person is shaking hand with the remaining people. Right? How do we determine the number of handshakes in this case? See, suppose there are two people, X and Y. Okay. X is shaking hand with Y. The Y C versa is also the same. Here is the order important. No. So X shaking hands with Y and Y with X will not be two different handshakes. It is the same. Right. Secondly, that gives us a confirmation saying that the order is not important. Okay, so let's see how it works. There will be as many handshakes as there is a combination of 12 different things taken two at a time. So what will be the answer for this? How many people are there? 12. Out of the 12, for a handshake to be performed, how many hands are needed? Two. 
So out of the 12 people available, you will take two at a time. Or you can say two people. Right? Two handshakes. The handshake, though it needs two hands, singers, those two hands come from two different people. So out of the 12 available people, out of the 12 available people, we need two persons at a time for this kind of a event to be performed. Is the point clear? No. So there is another question. There are seven points that are lying on a circle. How many? Seven points are lying on a circle. How many chords can be drawn by joining these points pairwise? So to form a chord, what are the number of points you need to choose? What are the minimum number of points that are needed? Two. So out of the seven chords, the seven points that are available, seven points that are available, like how you fill the blank spaces, you know, you use something like this. You will use, you will write something as 7C2. I'll tell you what that C is. Okay. Means out of the seven available points, you choose any two points. You make use of any two points to form a chord. That is the meaning. So, <coughs> so there will be, that's why they didn't tell what the number or mathematical expression. There will be as many, the 7C2, as many chords as there are combination of seven different things, seven different things taken two at a time. Are you able to understand this? Right? Now, having said this, let's try to understand how this C works. Like how we saw 7P2 means 7 factorial by 7 minus 2 factorial. Right? We'll understand what that 7C2 means. For that, we'll see what is NCR in the first place. Okay. Now, what we are going to obtain is, we'll obtain a formula for finding the number of combinations. Combinations means selections. So, for number of combinations, what are you actually doing? N different objects taken R at a time is given by the expression NCR. So, how is it given? It is given as NCR. So, to put it simple, if you need to arrange you go with permutation NPR. If you need to select, you go with combination that is NCR. Now let's understand how NPR and NCR are related. For that, let's take an example. Okay. See, suppose we have four di different objects A, B, C, D, right? We have four objects A, B, C, D, of which you need to take two at a time. So if we have to make combinations, then what are all the possibilities? You'll write A, B. AC, AD, BC, BD, and CD. Here, A, B, and BA are the same because order is not important, right? So that is why we did not write a BA, CA, DA, CB, BB, or DC, exactly the reverse of all these cases. So how many cases actually came out? There are only six cases. So what did you actually do? How many objects were there in your hand? Four objects were there. Out of the four objects, A, B, C, D, you need to take two at a time. So the meaning of it is 4C2. So what did the answer come out as? 4C2 came out as 6. Now listen to this. Let's give a different approach to this. Right? Let's give a different approach to this. If I say these four boxes are given to you, I'll ask you a question of how can you arrange, right? How can you arrange Two boxes taking, uh, sorry, out of the four boxes, I want you to arrange them in two blank spaces. So out of the four different boxes that are there, I'm asking you to arrange them in two blank spaces. All are distinct. So what will you do? You do 4P2. So because I use the word arrange. So when I say arrange, A, B and B are different because order is very important for me there. But can I say for arrangement, See, forget about mathematics. I am converting it into a logical statement. Listen to this. For me to arrange something, see, for me to arrange something, let's say this phone is here, this wallet is here. Okay, I have it like this. For me to arrange something, now you are seeing from that side, right? Phone is in my right hand and the wallet is in my left hand. So according to permutations, do they both mean the same or they are two different scenarios? Two different scenarios. But listen to this. For me to arrange, first what I need to do is I need to pick them. I need to select them. Then what I will do, then I will arrange. 
so can i say for this arrangement can i say that selection is the first process first thing is you need to select something into you need to arrange those selected items in different ways into arrange the selected items am i making sense so for me to have this 4p2 first is i need to select after that i will make an arrangement among the among whom among the selected objects so what i am trying to say is can i write 4p2 as what did i say selection is 4c2 so out of the four objects i need to choose two objects into into i need to arrange the selected objects how many objects did i select two objects two objects can be arranged among themselves in two factorial ways so from this if i try to write the equation then can i say that 4c2 is nothing but 4p2 divided by 2 factorial i need you to understand so 4p2 is nothing but 4c2 into 2 factorial why is it so i gave you the logic right or i can i write 4c2 is equal to 4p2 divided by 2 factorial having said that having said that what can i write ncr as it is npr so instead of 4 i wrote n instead of 2 i wrote r so ncr is equal to npr divided by r factorial meaning what is npr n factorial divided by n minus r factorial that n minus r factorial should get multiplied with r factorial for you to calculate ncr that is the formula so this is the reason why i told i told you in the beginning you remember combination is an intermediate step of permutation i would understand so combination is an intermediate step of permutation is it clear <laughs> make sense see all other things are there in your textbook Okay, so the important parts I will return it on the right hand side. You can just make a note of it. If there is any doubt, you can ask me. I'm assuming you are clear, but is there any doubt? so this is what i was trying to explain theorem number 5 where it states that npr is nothing but ncr times ncr times r factorial where r is going to be a number greater than 0 or less than or equal to n okay see proof i am not showing it because i have already showed it with the help of an example let's see okay i am not showing you the proof right okay there are some important things you need to keep in your mind <coughs> what is the formula for ncr n factorial by n minus r factorial into r factorial now you know why it is it right similarly if i have something called as ncn one minute But I'm a charge for it.
Excuse me, sir. Yeah, yeah. My was off. Sorry. Sir. So, did you understand those who are online? Did you understand this NCN? Sir, we couldn't hear you. Can you repeat once more? No, no, no. Are you able to hear me? Yes, yes sir. Okay. So, I am saying NCN is nothing but one. Because... I'm using this formula, n factorial by n minus r factorial into r factorial. So here n and r both are same. So n factorial by n minus n factorial into n factorial. So when you do that, n factorial and n factorial will get cancelled. Numerator will be 1 divided by n minus n factorial is 0 factorial. That is why it comes out to be 1. Is that point clear? Yes. Similarly, yes, nc0 is nothing but nc0 is n factorial divided by n minus 0 factorial into 0 factorial. n minus 0 factorial and n factorial are same. So, 1 divided by 0 factorial is 1 by 1. <coughs> and the most important property I was suggesting is this one, ncr is equal to nc n minus r. This is very, very, very important. The next chapter also will be using this a lot in, in a chapter called as binomial theorem. The chapter is completely based only on combination, not on permutation. Okay. So, the meaning of this is phi c2 is the same as phi c phi minus 2, which is 3. So, phi c2 and phi c3 will give you the same answer. Reason is very simple. Okay. Phi factorial by 3 factorial into 2 factorial. Why is it so? n factorial by n minus r factorial into r factorial. This will be phi factorial by phi minus 3 factorial, 2 factorial into 3 factorial. Only thing is the denominator A and B will get swapped. I'll show you the proof for it. Okay. A and B will get swapped. That's it. Okay. So, with this, the theory needed for this exercise is over. So, you need not sit and solve the problems. Okay. I will solve it. So, the following week, there is a test that is pla planned on complex numbers. Okay, so prepare for that. This chapter 7.4, I will solve it. Don't worry about it. You didn't attend. Huh? Yeah. Go through the videos, you'll understand. It's a simple chapter. Okay, but don't miss the test right now.
how much ever you get i don't mind no problem but attend it but attend that so it's okay for you because you are joined later okay but don't bunk it is it clear okay. guys yeah so we'll wind up with this as i told you my throat is not supporting <clears throat> See, those who are online, could you understand? So I just wanted to repeat this point that there will be a test in complex numbers in the upcoming week. So you prepare for that. Don't worry about 7.4. I will solve that. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah.